Previously on The Bill. She's dead. She has to be. Why else would someone make the barmaid lie? We'll continue looking for Geraldine. And we'll use every resource we've got. I'd like to put myself forward. No, I'm afraid not. You may have managed to silence Sally on the matter, but I will find out what's going on. He's got five million Denmark at 99. It's going down quicker than the tarts knickers. Damn that chum, it's a dog. It all rally. If the Swiss really have bought 200 mil, a lot of dealers are going to have to cover their shorts. Oh, that's the way to do it, my friend. You gotta hold your nerve. Keep that up. Boss might let you plan the big boys' swing. Look, darling, we might not be the top of the tree just yet, but we're the real meat. Meat head, you mean? You got a mouth. Do you know that? Right, there are your files. I'm going to the dentist. See you later. Yeah. Well, don't do anything I wouldn't do. And that gives you a lot of leeway. How are you doing? Oh, every time I leave that trading room, I feel like I need a shower. But apart from that, I'm fine. Are you sure I shouldn't have picked you up somewhere else? It's all right. Anybody else? So just tell them you're my dad. Hmm. Well, we have to get cracking on this one, because Sally's going to have to get back. Now, as some of you know, she's been undercover for the last three days at this bond traders in the city, Bennett Mathers, which is also the last working address of a missing 21-year-old, Geraldine Lawson. I take it we're assuming she's dead, sir? We're going to have to consider that possibility, yeah. Sally's going to touch on that in a minute. Now, it's not a very good picture, but it's the only one we've got. Geraldine Lawson. She's been missing for one month. Bank accounts, credit cards, mobile phone have not been used since. Was she working at this Bennett Mathers when she disappeared, Gov? No, she left there three months ago, so that means we've got another two months unaccounted for. There's also another good reason why we've got somebody undercover there. Sorry. Geraldine's father hired a private investigator to track her down. He discovered that a barmaid had been blackmailed by three city traders into lying about having seen Geraldine recently. Now, you can't see their faces, but the wine bar in question is a regular watering hole of the staff. And I believe I've identified two out of the three in the picture. Andrew Shield, Jeff Trent, both in their early 20s. The Shield's clean. Trent has a youth record, petty offences, and a couple more serious drug-related ones that never really stuck. How do they come across? Shield seems OK, but Trent lives up to the cliché of the arrogant city type. I mean, they're both earning decent money. Uh, they spend it like it's going out of fashion. Cool girls, boozy lunches, coke to keep them going. So what do you think's happened to Geraldine? Well, all we know so far is that these three forced a barmaid to give a bogus sighting in order to lay a false trail for the PI. Which would suggest that they're trying to cover up something pretty nasty. Nothing shady in her past that might explain her disappearance. She went off the rails a bit after losing her mother, briefly got mixed up with drugs, but apart from that, no, nothing of any significance. OK, well, Sai's going to go back undercover, see if she can ID the third suspect. Grace, I want you and Terry to carry on looking into Geraldine's movements before she vanished. Banksy, you're liaising with the father, yeah? Yes, Gov, he's coming in this morning with more photos. OK, one other thing before we go. Callum, Sally's doing a terrific job. OK, that's it, everybody. Thanks. <coughs> all right, Evan? Yeah, I'm great. I love standing outside a crime scene all morning, bored out of my skull. It's been going on for days now, haven't you? You're still getting the rubbish job. <sighs> Glad someone's noticed. You right, Sarge? How's uh, Sally getting on undercover? Great. She's playing a blinder. Oh, good for her. Well, I'll see you in the car in a minute. Sarge, what's that look for? Nothing, Sarge. Just wondering what fresh excitement you've got lined up for me next. Pushing the tea trolley, maybe? Oh, poor little Emma's been picked in. Is that what you're suggesting? No, I'm not suggesting it. I'm telling it like it is. Well, why would I do that? Because you feel threatened. I haven't quite worked out why yet, but don't kid yourself that that's not what this is about. Right. Well, don't 
thanks for the secondary school psychology lesson, PC King. And since we seem to have found your level, perhaps you can pop down to Canley High and distribute some drug information leaflets. So, we're going to carry on like this, are we? Fine. Thanks for coming in, Mr. Moss. How you doing? You've not found her, have you? No, we've not found her yet. I'm sorry. It's just, um, when you rang asking for photos of Gerald, you know, I thought maybe you were just trying to get me in here to break the bad news. No, Jim, I wouldn't play games with you like that. These are all I have. They're a few years old now, but I also left home so long ago. Right. She's gone. I feel that in my heart. I mean, gone. We don't know anything for certain yet, Jim, so don't give up hope. It's just so hard. I know. We've got an active, ongoing investigation into it, and we're making progress. So, hang in there. Matthew, me old mucker. Yeah, yeah. that's fine. I'll be there in five. Right, mate. Right, okay. What's happening? I thought we were meeting Matthew at lunchtime. Yeah, well, he's moved it up. Look, cover me while I dash out, will you? I want to be there. What's the matter? Don't you trust us? Just stall the boss. I'll be back in ten. You alright? What? Yeah, you know, I've just got a lot on my mind, that's all. Listen, I'm gonna go over the road and get one of those death by cappuccinos. Do you want one? Um, yeah, yeah, go on then, sure, why not? Six male. I think it's the third city boy from our CCTV photos. His name's Matthew. We took a phone call from him just before he came to the meet. Can you get a shot? Yeah, yeah, I can actually. Come on. Gov, me again. I'm a bit too far away, so you may not be able to see much in the pictures, but I've got them. Can you stick around? Yeah, I can, but not for long. Okay, be careful. Okay. Whoa, hang on a sec. Geraldine Lawson. I think we found her. There's no, there's no mistake in her here. That's my Geraldine. Thank you. Thank you. You realise it's just a sighting, Jim. We still don't know where she is or what she's doing. Just to know she's still out there. He says it's her. Excellent. So what now, Gov? Well, that's a good question. Well, we committed resources because there was a woman missing and evidence of foul play. But now the goalposts have been changed, I'm inclined to pull Sally out. There's a lot of unanswered questions, though, Gov. Where's she been? Why are they laying a false trail? What are they up to? Yeah, but that hardly justifies keeping somebody undercover. No, but the money's already been spent for today, so why not leave her into the end of the shift, see if we can get a result out of it? On with Terry Gov. They've blackmailed a barmaid. They're exchanging packages in the street. Something's going on. Could be drugs, Gov. Sally's already said the boys are fond of a bit of coke. Plus, Geraldine's got form in that department. And it'd be a shame to leave things half-finished, but Jim Lawson's sake. Yeah, all right, you sold me on it. But it can only be till the end of the day. So we've got two actions. We need a surname for the third city boy, and we need to find Geraldine. We're going to speak to her phone company, see if she started using her mobile again, and we'll get on to the landlord, see if she's gone back to the flat. Right, I'll get on to Sally. Tell her what the new deadline is. Oh, thanks. Thanks for the support. Anytime. 
Right. Well, if anyone wants us, we'll be talking to the landlord. Yep. Can you put some new locks on uh, flat eight, please? What's to be a landlord, huh? Normally my assistant deals with the maintenance, but he's on holiday. How can I help, sir? One of your old tenants, Geraldine Lawson. Have you seen her recently? I don't understand. I thought she was gone missing. Yeah, she did, but she's been seen again recently. And apparently you've still got the stuff from her flat, is that right? Yeah, uh, she disappeared without any warning, so I put everything in uh, storage. She's not been back to collect them? No, I doubt she will. She owes me a lot of money, you see, for unpaid rent. Still, she might like some of her personal possessions back. So if she does contact you, give us a call, will you? Yeah, of course. Uh, is she in some trouble? No, no, no. We just want to have a chat with her. Thanks for your time, Mr. Reed. Dear Sally's doing well, Sarge. Yeah, that's my team. Listen, I don't want to speak out of turn or anything, but well, I get the impression that Emma's feeling a bit sidelined. She's missed out on all the good jobs recently. And she's a good cop. She likes to get stuck in, you know. Yeah. Well, take the rough with the smooth, don't you? Sierra Oscar, two one from Sierra Oscar, Trans Am agent, twenty four Rudkin Road, disturbance. Yeah, all received. On our way. I will not calm down. I'm not moving from this spot and you two. You explain to me. Calm down, sir. Just calm. I'm not calming down. Well, you will calm down, sir. And we'll take this straight down the station. And what's your name? Right. Drake. And yours? Jess Poplar. I'm the one who called you. All right, Jess, you want to tell me what's going on? This customer came in, swapped some euros for English, went out, and then came back ten minutes later shouting and screaming. That's because this money is counterfeit. Fake. What makes you think it's fake? I worked in a bank for 15 years, that's what. But if you're such an expert, why did it take you 10 minutes before you decided to complain? How do I know you didn't switch those notes while you were gone? Oh, so you do admit that there's something wrong with them? I'm not admitting anything. Enough. Just bag up all the money you got, we'll take it down to the bank and let them decide whether it's counterfeit or not. And I'm going to need all the CCTV footage you got. After that, it's down to CID. So the bank confirmed that the notes are fake. And it was the travel agency that called us in the first place, so I doubt they would have passed the notes deliberately. Yeah, which makes one of the previous customers probably our likely source. I believe this. And we never ever heard of a tape egg cleaner. Well, they obviously take as much notice of their equipment as they do the money that crosses the counter. Right, so I guess all we're left with is this. So somebody passed these and got genuine foreign currency in exchange. Then they take it somewhere else and change out to real pound notes, yeah? Yeah, it's a neat way to launder large amounts of cash. I mean, they're pretty good, aren't they? You wouldn't know, would you, just by looking at them? According to the bank, it's the uh, silver dashes that are the weak spot. It's not actually woven through the paper, it's just a foil laid on top which you can scratch off with your nail. And the hologram's nowhere near as clear as it should be. Right, I'll inform SCD6, because Snyderman is part of their remit. Other than that, all we can do is put out an alert. Yeah. I'll get a better night out of it. Right, got those letters you wanted. So, is there anything else we can do for you boys? Uh, no, thanks. We're cool, Sal. I don't think we've met before. Hi, I'm Sally. Matthew Farisa. You're new. I'd remember a face like yours. Oh, I'm just a temp. So do you work for the firm? Not anymore, but we do business. Oh, are you a trader as well? In a manner of speaking, are you Matthew? <laughs> Anyway, I can't stay. Uh, Jeff says you were a bit unhappy about the deal we put together. Let's meet up after work and sort it out, right? Yeah, all right, okay. See you later. So, Boys, it's my last day. You're joking, you only just got here. Well, I guess that's why they call us tent. It's very nice to know that you care. Well, I'm a caring type of guy, Sal. Well, listen, we'll uh, have to send you off with a bang, so to speak. <laughs> What did you have in mind? Right. Come out with us after work. Might be able to knock off a bit early. We can have some bubbly for starters, eh? And don't you worry about our Andy here. He's already got a bird stashed away, ain't you, Andy? Right. <laughs> Hello, Sally. Gov? Yes, Sally. Yep, it's me. I think I've hit the jackpot. Not only have I met the third bloke, but I've also managed to wrangle having drinks with him tonight after work. Right. Yeah. His name is Matthew Feruza. I think he's the work here. Well done, Sally. There seems to be some sort of disagreement between the boys. Andrew Shields isn't happy about something. Which could be really useful if I can talk to one of them over a few drinks. I really need someone to come with me as cover. Oh, yeah? Who do you have in mind? Well, Emma would be perfect. I'll see what I can do, OK? But in the meantime, you be careful. Sir, 
I've just spoken to Geraldine's phone company. She hasn't started using her mobile again or gone back to her flat either. Well, it looks like Sally's her only hope of making any progress. I guess we were right to keep her in. The only other leader we've got at the moment is this guy, Matthew Feruzai, the third city boy. Now, if you can check him on the system and then talk to HR at Bennett Mathers, who used to work there, tell him it's in strict confidence. Yes, sir. I'll see about pinching Emma. Doug? Emma? Are you looking for me? Yeah. Uh, how do you feel about working with Sally this afternoon? I mean, it may be prolonging your shift, but... That'd be brilliant. I'd love to, Gov. Good. Right. Uh, Sergeant, I'm going to pinch Emma for a while to work with Sally. You OK with that? Yeah, well, I don't think she's really got the experience for the job, sir. Well, she won't get it either, will she, unless somebody gives her the chance? Well, no, but... Uh... Apart from which, undercover work is always best when it's as close to the truth as possible, and the fact that Emma's a mate of Sally's is perfect. So I'll give you a shout in a minute, OK? OK. Thanks, Gov. Sergeant Stone. Is there something going on with Emma that I should know about? Not at all. I just don't think she's got the experience. It's nothing personal. Good. Because I want you to tag along as well. Take DC Perkins with you. Go. We'll do. How many more? I'm starving. We've got two more banks on Rutkin Road. And then a travel agent just before we get to Nick. I hope this isn't a waste Morning, of time. Sierra Oscar. Wall exit by Tarmar Street. Counterfeit currency being used. Suspect still at location. You were saying? Sierra Oscar from Sierra Oscar 2 2, show us the signs. There were two of them, two, two of them, two of them. Where? That one, there's one of them, the blonde, the blonde. Sierra Oscar from 795, chasing one, I see one female down Thomas Street, over. Yeah, I'll hold. Oh, Grace. Did you ever hear anything back from Bennett Mathers about a third city bloke? Yes, I did. Fruze joined the firm a year ago after dropping out of a business design course at college. It was Trent who oh, recommended him for the vacancy. They were schoolmates in Essex. But it turns out that Fruze couldn't cut it. They let him go around six months ago. I'm trying to find out where he went next. How did he get on with his record? Well, there's nothing much in our system apart from a caution of a possession. I just went to the Essex police now. They ever take me off hold. I heard you had a run in with one of our counterfeiters. Yeah, dirty tricks you've all known. And it's recovered this all, eh? Yeah, that's not all we got. Well, the FIU SCD6 will be pleased. They reckon this could be part of a counterfeiting operation they've been sniffing around for weeks. Oh, they'll be happy to know the bank's got great CCTV coverage. Got a good shot of the girls involved as well. Grace, yeah. Terry, you might want to look at this. It's incredible. This Geraldine Lawson keeps turning up like a bad penny. Yeah, and now she's turned up in the middle of my counterfeiting scam. Never been to this place before? Well, we know how to show a girl a good time, don't we, Andy? Yeah, yeah, I suppose so. Oh, well, hello, hello. <sighs> ah. How's it going, darling? What do you mean you lost some of it? Oh, that's not what we think it is. We'll have to explain it to Matthew. It's not up to me. You want more of the stuff, you're going to have to sort out with him. Just wait till Matthew gets here, I'll explain it to you then. So, what time's this mate of yours? I should be here any minute. It's probably her now. I'll be in there. Dad! Sorry. Hi. Can you talk? Yes, fine. Look, we've had a lead. Geraldine has been circulating counterfeit money around various banks. Well, that certainly puts a spin on things. Actually, Trent just took a phone call from a girl. Asking for more stuff, so maybe it was Geraldine. Well, that would make sense. Because they lost a lot of counterfeit money when they were making their escape. So maybe they're asking for more. Right, I need to look at Trent's phone. He'll probably have the number on last call of redial. If I can clock it, then it might give us a direct link to Geraldine. OK, you do that. But whatever you do, don't blow your cover. All right then, Dad. OK, catch you later. Bye. Hey. All right, babe, you all right? Yeah, how you doing? Gov. This just came through from my contacts in Essex Police. Year before last, they had a big problem with students printing off banknotes at home on their inkjet printers. Inkjet printers? You've got to be joking. Can't be that easy. Well, it is if you know how. They only use them to get into raves and nightclubs. Yeah, but that kind of fit money's in the big league. What's the connection? Well, according to Intel, one of the ringleaders was a Matthew Feruze. So they moved on from inkjet printers to doing it properly? 
and that's not all gov. I checked out ways working now, citywide design. They supply corporate design and print services to city firms. Right, it's all coming together. Let's bring the others up to speed. So the two cases are definitely linked. Geraldine Lawson and her unknown accomplice circulating counterfeit money which most likely came from this guy, Matthew Peruzzi. Then Andrew Shield and Jeff Trent are what, his accomplices got? Yeah, it looks that way. But the priority is finding Geraldine Lawson. Easier said than done, Gov. OK, well, you work on the blonde accomplice. See if you can ID her with facial recognition from the bank CCTV. If we find her, the chances are we'll find Geraldine. Joe, can you have a look at this uh, citywide design company? We need to find out where the printing facilities are based. Now, ideally, we need to catch these people red-handed. We haven't got a lot of time, so let's see if we can put these jokers behind bars, OK? This is the place up here, isn't it? Yeah, they should be in there by now. Where are you going? Me and Terry will follow in a few minutes. I'm sure I can get through the front door. Might not be capable. What? Nothing. Just, you look the part. How do you want to play this thing? We'll just sit back and watch the girls. Push your number for both of us, eh? We've already ordered. I'll get some from the bar. No, no, no. Sit down, you plonker. You. We're on the bubbly. Stick another bottle on that order as well, love, and uh, keep them coming. That's the way you do it. <laughs> do you do for a living? I do business design. He's a genius. Lousy on the trading floor, about what he does best. Putting things together just so. He's the maestro. Anyway, we should have that chat we talked about. Can't have our Andy getting upset now, can we? I'm not upset, mate. I just don't think we should be doing things this way, that's all. What? Right. You girls get stuck into these. We won't be long. Mental. <laughs> Excuse us. Well, they're a bunch of charms, aren't they? Yeah, Bango's only chance of listening in. Come sit over here. OK. Right, I need to look at his mobile phone. It's in his jacket pocket. Last call we done. OK, I think I should do it. You're well in with them. You don't want to blow it. Yeah, what if you get caught? Well, I've got an idea. You go to the loo and uh, leave me on my own. Otherwise, it won't work. All right, be careful. Okay. Oh, well, if that's not her, it's her double. Charis Anderson. Soliciting, soliciting, gross indecency. She's a tom. Well, I'm not going to ask why Geraldine Lawson's working with a prostitute. Let's just find her. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, I was just wondering whose it was. Uh, I need to use the phone. Mine's broken. What's the matter? She's playing with your phone. Wasn't that in my pocket? No, no, it was on the table. I, I was going to ask if I could use it. I I'll need to call my flatmate if it's going to be a long one. Yeah, what's wrong with your phone? Like I said, it's broken. <sighs> Leave her alone, all right? She said she was going to ask for permission. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Hey, what's going on? Oh, nothing. Use the phone, darling. But be careful. It's top of the range. Sorry, I use Sal's ashes back. Yeah, sure. Cheers. Is that not one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Same time as your different. No, that's all right. I'll hang on. Let's have a look this so what's up with you two? Miss Charis Anderson by five minutes. Found the dig she was staying at, but she'd gone. Right. Well, Sally's phoned through with this mobile phone number. She's sure it belongs to Geraldine. And I'm on the phone company now. Yeah. OK. Tracy Burfield. 20 Hagar Court. Online. Yeah, I've got that. Well, that's thrown me. Apparently, this number is registered to a Tracy Burfield, 20 Hagarth Court on the Coal Lane. Geraldine could be using an assumed name. She did go off the radar for a month. Well, either way, I want you to check it out. If you're right, this could be the break. CID 
Will you get in there, please, sir? All right, calm down, sir. We're over the All right. Why is there money when I'm here? Right, okay, we're going to get you an ambulance. I'm not Geraldine. For God's sake, will you tell him I don't know where she is? I've never even met her. I'm not Geraldine. is admitting involvement in the counterfeit scam, but says she was just along for the ride, helping a mate. It gives us a bit of leverage, at least. Let's see what Tracy has to say. Tracy, do you feel able to talk to us? We know all about you. Charis has already coughed to helping you. So all we need to know is why you were pretending to be Geraldine Lawson. If I tell you, will you get that madman off my back? The one that did this? Yes, it will. They hired me to do it. Who did? Three city lads. Matthew, Jeff and Andrew. Never knew their surnames. Said they wanted to hire me for something special. Special? How? Well, they wanted to unload some snide twenties. A lot of them, quickly. Needed someone to work the travel agents in the bank, so whoever did it could keep a quarter of the take. So where does Geraldine Lawson come into it? Well, they had a stolen identity I could use in case I was asked to show ID at the tills, and... Well, they picked me because I looked a bit like her. All I had to do was change my hair. What did they give you belonging to Geraldine? A driver's licence, checkbook, bank card, well, they told me to use them for a couple of weeks while I was circulating the cash. Well, I didn't worry about it, because I knew in a couple of days, well, I was going to dump everything, and no one would be able to chase it back to me. So you thought? Yeah. Did you know the man who attacked you? Never seen him before in my life. All I know is he was looking for this Geraldine. Thanks for that, Tracy. OK. And Lord next. You might as well talk to us, Mr. Enripper. We caught you assaulting Tracy Burfield, so you're going down regardless. And you will be going down. We checked you out. This isn't your first offence, is it? I'm a legitimate bandbot. Yeah, one who does a roaring trade dealing coke and blow to his tenants. That is what you got done for. Twice. Correct me if I'm wrong. Right. Well, what's not in dispute is that you tracked down Tracy thinking she was Geraldine Lawson. How did you manage to find her? I have some friends. So you heard that Geraldine was apparently back. You put the word out, your eyes and ears on the street did the rest. That right? Let's just say I don't like people who disappear without paying their rent. All that effort and violence because Geraldine didn't pay her rent. Do me a favor. I'm betting it was the drug money we're chasing her for. Hmm? Okay, she ripped me off. Paid me with hundreds of pounds of fake money. Nobody makes a fool of me like that. I just wanted to get back what is mine. Is that why she ran away? Because you beat her up when you found out she'd paid you with counterfeit cash. I didn't beat her up. I gave her 24 hours to come up with the real money. That's when she disappeared. Because she was terrified. Because she is the type to do a runner rather than pay her debts. That's why I put her car in the storage and uh, all her things. So she can't disappear without paying me back. Didn't work, did it? And you didn't tell us earlier you had her car stashed away. I get my money. She can have it back. One thing. Why would she pay you with fake notes? She must have known what you were capable of. Maybe she didn't know they were fake. How do I know? Who cares? It's not my problem. You're a really nice man, aren't you, Pesnik? Why are you so interested anyway? Because unlike your wide boy mates, you seem to have something interesting to say. Plus, you stood up for me earlier, and I like that. So what's wrong? I come up with some idea right now about a friend of mine. You know, and these two Herbert start sticking their oars in and getting cute. They're going to ruin everything. It's going to be me that ends up in the ringer. Why? Why just you? Uh, never mind. Mm. Sally tells me you've got a girl stashed away somewhere. More about it. I just don't want to tread on anyone's toes. Is there anyone special? No, I had a girlfriend, but she had to go away from London for a while. Why? Why's that? <sighs> yeah, it's complicated, but the answer to your question, no, there's no anybody. There's more where that came from. Mm. I'm just going to powder my nose. <laughs> Hey, hey. 
How did you pull off that phone thing? I took the battery out, so I had an excuse. Listen, I think I can get him to spill the beans. He's been drinking and he's cross with his friends, but I'll need to get him on his own. You're talking about leaving it? Forget it. You stay here where everything's under control. But Sarge... No, no, I said no. What are you afraid of? I'll come up with the goods or something. Oh, is that what you think this is about? Oh. How dare you, you disgusting pervert. Oh, so come on, it's fine. Come on, Andrew. Sorry, pal. Got to ask him now. <sighs> That hurt, didn't it? It for me. So Geraldine gave her landlord snide money, which originated from these city boys. But what was she doing with it in the first place? And where is she now? All we know is she went on the run, and the boys hired Tracy to impersonate her. The boys got split when they realised a the dealer was after her. They didn't want him following the money trail back to them, so they hired Tracy to lay a false scent. Yeah, well, that makes sense. I'll pass it on to Sergeant Stone. But in the meantime, we need to get somebody down to search this garage and have a look at Geraldine's car. We get better than night to do that. There could be money or anything stashed in it. What about Jim Lawson? Did we tell him that someone was impersonating his daughter? Yeah, yeah, we need to do that. Uh, but let's arrange that for later, because by then we'll know what's happening. So it looks like Geraldine's still in hiding. And the only way we're going to find her is by nicking these city boys. I think Tracy Burfield could give them to us. She's been discharged from St Hugh's and she's here waiting to make a statement. Give them to us? How? Oh. Do you remember she made a call earlier to Jeff Trent, asking for more counterfeit money to cover what she'd lost? So if she plays ball, we can still have this meeting. And we can nab them red-handed with the money. I reckon she'd go for it, Gov. She's not exactly over the moon about getting a kicking off Besnick. Hi, Tracy. This is DCI Meadows. Well, looks like you're taking quite a purse in. How do you feel about getting some pay back? It's got Fruz on the phone right now. You all right, I'll hold. It's Tracy Burford on the phone to Fruza. She wants to be sitting up with me. All right, guys, I'm going to have to head out. Sort out that deal. Oh, no, actually, we'll, we'll come with you. Come on, I'll need some fresh air. You can catch up with your mate later, if you like. Come on. OK. Um, Emma, really, what? It's okay, I'll be alright. Wait a minute, Gov. Emma and Shield are going in the freezer. And they must be going to the meet. Alright, well, I feel sure that they can handle it that way. We'll stay with Sally. <laughs> so, you've had a couple of days to settle in. What do you reckon to Sunhill? A busy place. I don't think I'm going to be bored. We're on. The meeting's going down, Joe. Got her. Doesn't look like much, does it? Maybe not from the outside, but citywide subcontracted this place. There's print gear in there worth hundreds of thousands. The one at the end. You sure these are the spare keys to the car, yeah? I don't know. They were in her stuff. Bag seats clear. Check the boot, yeah? Oh my god. Geraldine. Stand by, Joan. Go ahead, Gav. Scrub the obo and arrest the city boys on site. Geraldine's been found dead, so it's now a murder inquiry. Emma's in the car with Shield and Peruse. So get her out of there. This is going too smoothly. Oi! You're next! Matthew and Peruse are the car to find counterfeit currency in the murder of Geraldine Lawson. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm the defense. You do not Where the hell's Emma? Jeffrey Trent, I'm arresting you on suspicion of forgery and the murder of Geraldine Lewis. Murder? You don't have to say anything unless you wish to do so, but anything you do say may be taken down in writing and given in evidence. Just stand here. Yes. Right, I've reason to believe that one of my officers is in immediate danger. So I'm conducting a limited, urgent interview on the code C of no, 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 wait, this is a mistake. You can't do this. Oh, yes, I can. You've got it all wrong. She's not dead. And you paid her so she wouldn't grasp up about the counterfeit money. She's dead. We found her body. But he said that... Oh my god. 
It was his idea to hire someone to impersonate her, so... That means... You're telling me he's killed her? Look, all I'm interested in is a word about her Mike PC. So where do you think Shields is How should I know? Sorry. Um, oh, sorry, his flat, I'd imagine. Um, Stanby House on Trafford Street, 30-something. Right, get on to that. Okay. Give me Shields' mobile phone number. It's on here. Okay, Sally, can you get Tao to trace that and do the same with Emma's phone? Yes, sir. Right, one last chance to earn yourself some brownie points. Where else could Shield have taken her? <sighs> uh, bars, restaurants. Come on! How should I? I don't know! Uh, well, think! Uh, Oh, wait, uh, maybe his, uh, his parents' house. A uh, place in Islington, because they're um, abroad most of the year. Address? I don't know. I've never been. Um, somewhere in Angel. Monterey. We're going to move fast. Get in. Is this yours? What do you think? Look, um, i better let Sally know that we uh, took a cab instead of going with Matthew. Doesn't work, remember? Oh, yeah. Can I use yours? Yeah, 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 there, yeah, there's one inside. Come on. Wow, nice place. Yeah, it's all right, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> okay, too fast. <laughs> well, I thought that's why we come here. Mm, I think you had a bit more than I thought. <laughs> Where's the phone? Um, yeah. Uh, Andrew, don't play games. Oh, but you're the one who wants to play games. So listen, it's just moving a bit too fast for me. I, I like to talk a bit first. Why don't you, um, pour us a drink? Yeah. All right. Okay. Still no word from Emma? Nothing. Stan's on his way out to Shields' flat. They're still his parents' place at the Angel. Can you get Tiayu to run traces on Emma and Shields' mobile numbers? Yes, boss. Grace, I've asked Sally to draw up a list of all the minicab plugs that are near the bar. Can you ring round see if you can find out where Emma was dropped off? I'm on it. So, what do you want to talk about? You. I mean, I hardly know you. You started opening up a little bit in the bar. I said you were in trouble. So? Well, I'd like to know what I'm getting into, that's all. It sounded like your friends were kind of trying to drop you in it. Yeah. Well, all Matthew's fault, really. What do you mean? Oh. Well, after he got the boot from Bennett Mathers, right, he came to me and Jeff and said he had this deal that could net us a load of money. Shouldn't have gone for it, basically. Shouldn't have got involved. Why? Was it something illegal? Depends on your point of view, really. I mean, I mean, what's money after all? I mean, we move millions around every day. It doesn't exist. It's just a transaction on a computer screen. It's not real. It's just... Well, it's real if it gets you into trouble. <laughs> yeah, it got me into trouble, all right. Yeah. Things are just spiralled out of control. Why don't you tell me about it? Maybe I can help. Mm. This problem, was it... Was it to do with your girlfriend? What do you keep asking about, though? Well, you, ju you just said that she had to leave London suddenly. I thought it was a strange thing to say, so... That's the second time you've asked me about her. What's so many questions? It's a conversation. I say something, you say something. <laughs> Why me, actually? Why me? I often don't get a bird like you coming on to me about wanting something. Oh, come on. Oh, hang on, hang on. Actually, let's think about this. Why were you looking at Jeff's phone back in the bar, all right? And, hang on, there was that bloke that you were talking to at the bar as well. <sighs> You're working for that private investigator, aren't you? The one that was hired to try and find her. Sierra Oscar 55 five from 30. I've just checked Shield's apartment. They're not there. Right, I want you to join Joe, the angel. We're running traces here, so I want you on the flight in case something comes through. Gov. <laughs> Terry, we need that location. Can you push TRU? I'll do my best. Any luck with the cab firms? Sorry, Gov. Right, well, Shield's left with Emma 40 minutes ago. What's he going to do when he realises she's a police officer? Andrew, this isn't funny. I don't know what you're talking about with private investigators. Look, you said I could use your phone. And what is it with you and the phone? I mean, who are you really trying to ring? Look, you've had too much to drink. You're just being silly. If you behave like this, it's no wonder Well, that... maybe you're not even a private investigator. Maybe, maybe you're just some tar hard to screw information out of us. No, you're just being offensive. I'm leaving. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, Give that back! Oh. Ah! Give it back! Just get off! Take the recorder or something. No. Or are you wearing a mic? What? Where is it? Get off Where's me. the mic? It's insane! Shut up! 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 Shut up!
Sì, sa, la sua scelta. Sì, sì. Here you go. There's no signal from Emma's phone. So what does that mean? She hasn't fixed it yet. She disconnected it so that she could have an excuse to use Trent's. What about Shield's phone? It's a different network. It'll take longer. Would you have any longer? Gov, Shield paid for his cab with a credit card. It dropped him and a woman off in Angel, Rennell Road. Right, get everybody down there. <laughs> I promise I won't scream. Let me talk. Let me talk. I'm not a private investigator. I'm a police officer. You're lying. No. I'm not. My ID's in my bag. We know all about the counterfeit money, Andrew. I knew it. I knew they'd blow it by getting her to exchange the money. All I wanted was for Tracy to dress up as Geraldine Lanfall's trail. <laughs> they had to get smart, didn't they? And now look. Why? Why did somebody have to impersonate Geraldine, Andrew? Where is she? It, it was an accident. Uh, I tried to shut her up so the neighbours were near, but she, she kept on struggling and we fell. Her, her neck made this cracking sound and... So, it was an accident. You were just having an argument, yeah? After she lost her job, I just felt sorry for her. We started dating and I let her money for rent and then... After a while, I'd, I'd just give it to her more and more and more, you know, for food, for rent, for... Coke. But the whole time you were you were giving her the counterfeit money, yeah? The landlord found out it was counterfeit and he threatened her. And, he, and she came to you in a panic? Yeah. Said she wanted real money or she'd tell the police and just drop us in it. I tried to tell her I didn't have it, but she wouldn't listen and just started getting hysterical. She just... She said things. Made me angry. That's all she cared about, you see. The money. But I've told you all about it. <laughs> you, you never get away with killing a police officer. They're looking for me even now. But they don't know where you are. <laughs> You're not a killer, Andrew. You're not a killer. But if you hurt me deliberately, they will throw away the key. I've got a whole life ahead of you. Don't throw it away. It's over, Andrew, it's over. Hey. 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 You right? Boy, get up. Get on your feet. <coughs> sure. Is she here? You find her. Let's go through here, Jim. No. No. Emma, Sally, well done for today. It's good work. Well, I expect Yeah, Shields has put his confession down on site. CPS are now deciding whether they're doing for murder or manslaughter. And what about the others? Well, we've done them for forgery, but it seems pretty certain that they didn't know anything about Geraldine. I think Shields convinced them that he'd paid her off and sent her away. And when this private investigator came sniffing around, he's told them the idea of using Tracy to lay a false trail. But Trent and Fraser couldn't resist getting her to circulate the money at the same time. Yeah, that's about the size of it. Anyway, I'm off down the pub. I'll buy you a drink. Okay. You head down there and I'll see you there. Okay. So, Governor seems to be happy. Yeah. Here a second. Don't ever, ever disobey one of my orders again. I beg your pardon? I told you not to go off with S.H.I.E.L.D. I thought he was going with Feruza to the meet. No, you didn't. I got a confession out of a killer. What more do you want? I need someone I can rely on, Emma. Yeah. 
That's not what this is about at all. I've got you sussed. Really? Mm hmm I've seen the way you look at me. You want me in your gang. You do. You just don't know if you can handle me. Is that right? Yeah. I thought so. Next time on the field. All right, I'll see you to have a Sarah Roscoff and Thurston, we have a major incident here. Repeat, major incident. It's not a bomb, okay? All this time I've been trying to get your approval. You think I'm a bent cop? Hello!